welcome my dear students today we are going to start a very important chapter 6 that is trial balance and rectification of errors till now we have studied that every entry has one debit and one credit aspect and both these aspects are equal now this means that all the debits will be equal to credits well this is proved by trial balance so now let's begin with the meaning of trial balance it's an important statement showing all the debit and credit of the ledger accounts along with the cash and bank balance noted down from the cash book in fact it is a tool to verify that all the debit and credit are correctly posted that is arithmetical accuracy so it's an important statement showing the final position of all the accounts for preparing final accounts it has four columns first account title where we write the name of account second ledger folio where we write the page number of the ledger from where this balance is noted down and then one column for debit and one column for credit now generally it is prepared at the end of the year although monthly quarterly can also be prepared now the main question is how to make a trial balance let's start first of all we note all the balance from the ledger all the debit balance in the debit column and all the credit balance in the credit column then in the end we check whether both sides are telling or not if not then there is an error which has to be corrected or rectified so we can say the main objectives of making a trial balance are first see the arithmetical accuracy second locating the errors and the last one preparing the final accounts let us first see what are the main debit balance and credit balance the main debit balance are all the assets like plant machinery building etc and debtors all expenses and the most important cash and bank balance which is not there in the ledger but it is in the cash book then drawings it also has a debit balance prepaid expenses that is the expenses paid in advance sales return etc similarly the main credit balance are all the liabilities creditors incomes purchase return provisions advances etc now coming to the first point that is arithmetical accuracy here we would like to mention one thing that telling of trial balance is not a proof of accuracy of the accounts it just tells you that accounts are arithmetically correct which means all debits have equal credits and we have posted all the debits and all the credits equally coming to the second point that is help in locating the errors now when a trial balance does not tally it means there is an error now what kind of error can be they are first it can be in totaling the trial balance second it can be in totaling the subsidiary books subsidiary books means purchase return purchase book sale return sale book all these kind of books and third point there can be an error in posting of journal entries next there can be an error of balancing of an account and the next error can be in carry forward of the balance to the trial balance like account balance to the trial balance there can be an error and next one wrong column of the trial balance suppose instead of debit i am writing in credit so that can be the case next it can be omission to record in the trial balance you have not recorded it at all next 
debit written as credit or credit written as debit. Next, there can be wrong names like you have written Ram instead of Sham like that. Similarly, some other types we will come across while doing the practical questions. Wait till that time. One should also note that even a tallied trial balance is no guarantee that arithmetical accuracy can be there as there can be a compensating error also. Mistake in debit is equal to mistake in credit. Now, we can write both debit and credit wrong. In all these cases, trial balance will tally, but only arithmetical accuracy is there, not foolproof accuracy is there. Right? Coming to the third point, it helps in preparation of financial statements. Now, trial balance is the bridge between journal entries and the financial statements. We transfer all the items from trial balance to the trading account, P&L account and balance sheet and then do the adjustments. Now, all these are going to be explained in chapter number 9 and 10 to follow. Now, let us come to the methods of preparing trial balance. There are three methods of preparing trial balance. First, total method, second, balance method and the third, total come balance method. Now, under the first method that is the total method, we write all the debits total and all the credits total in debit and credit column respectively. Now, this is not a common method as it does not help in assuming the accuracy of trial balance. Coming to the second method that is the balance method which is the most popular one, we note the net balance of each account that is debit adjusted with credit. Now, whatever the net balance is may be debit or credit it is written in that column. Coming to method number 3 which is total come balance method. It is a combination of both the methods. Here we prepare four columns. First for totals and then for balance. Two column for totals and two for balance. Again it is not very widely used as it is very time consuming and moreover it serves no specific purpose. So, what we conclude is that method number 2 is the best used commonly and in practice. Let us test our understanding as to which accounts are debit and which are credit. As I will speak you think in your mind and then after a pause I will speak the answer and you will be able to judge the correctness of your answer. Let us begin the game, be alert, capital, yes it is a credit balance. Next one, drawings, debit balance, plant, debit, purchase, debit, interest received, credit because it is an income, purchase return, yes credit, bank overdraft, yes credit it is a liability, goodwill, debit it is an asset, opening stock, yes it is debit, salary, it is an expense, yes debit. Now, let us discuss the significance of the agreement of trial balance. As we discussed earlier, the agreement of trial balance only guarantee the arithmetical accuracy. It does not guarantee the accuracy of accounting records. So, in fact, there can be errors which can affect the trial balance and some errors which do not affect the trial balance. In totality, we can classify them in four categories. First, 
error of commission, second error of omission, third error of principle and the fourth compensating errors. Let us test our understanding by way of few multiple choice questions. Question number 1, I will be giving you the four options, you think about it and then I will speak the answer. So, let us begin question number 1, trial balance will not agree if there option 1 is one sided error, option 2 two sided error, option 3 both A and B and the last option none of the above. The answer is A part that is one sided error. Second question, trial balance is first option an account, second option a statement, third option subsidiary book and the last option is a principal book. No, it is not an account, it is a statement. The right answer is B part that is statement. Question number 3, trial balance is prepared A after preparing financial statements, B after recording in the subsidiary books and C after posting to the ledger and the last option after posting to the ledger is complete and accounts are balanced. Yes, the last option is correct when we complete the posting and the accounts are balanced in debit or credit then we make the trial balance. So, students in this session we had discussed what is the trial balance, how it is prepared what are its objective and the methods of preparing trial balance, what are the types of errors and a few multiple choice questions. So, in our next session when we will be discussing the errors in detail that is what is error of omission when we have not recorded at all or we have recorded a part of it, error of commission that is the errors which are committed by the staff of the organization like totaling error, carry forward errors or name wrongly taken all these kind of errors and a very important error, error of principle that is when we are not looking at the basic aspect of the accounts something really basically wrong like we are treating personal account as nominal account or real account as nominal account and all these things we will be discussing in detail. One more error compensating error which is very difficult to find out like there is a mistake in debit and mistake in credit and the trial is tell it how to locate that kind of errors. These things we are going to discuss in detail along with the examples in our next session and then we will proceed to how to rectify them. Like one entry is wrong then you have to think what is the right entry for that and what you have done wrong entry only then you will be able to rectify. If, if somebody does not know what is wrong then how can he rectify. So, till then you go through this topic and wait for the next session where we will be discuss practical aspect of this rectification of errors. Till then happy learning and all the best, Namaskar.